I've been noticing a little bit of a trend on Instagram when it comes to shooting B-roll. It's not the same kind of B-roll as I did previously, but it has the same kind of ingredients. There's a guy called Bach Visuals on Instagram. I'm gonna drop a link down below so you can head over there and check it out. He's doing some super cool speed ramping in and out with cars and it looks a little bit like a robot in a way. And ever since I saw it the first time, I've been really interested in trying this technique out myself and see if I can actually do it the way that he does it. I have never done anything like this before. Thank you for uh, borrowing, lending me the bike. <laughs> No problem. And uh, for those of you uh, that isn't following this man yet, I'd recommend you do so. He's a very good photographer and videographer. The thing that you need to think of when you're shooting this is that it's not gonna be possible if you're not using a gimbal. The gimbal that I use is the DJI RS3 Pro. You can use basically whatever kind of gimbal, but something that I've noticed is that you're gonna be ha have to be able to go into the FPV mode when you're doing this. The reason why you want to shoot in FPV mode and not any of the other modes is because then you can get this like twist and turning kind of vibe into the shot. It's also very important that when you're shooting this, you're trying to keep focus of one spot in the center because when you're doing the speed ramp, it's gonna move with that spot in focus and that is kind of what sells the concept. If you have 50 FPS in your camera as a maximum, this is not gonna be an issue. I think it's gonna be more than enough to be able to achieve the same techniques but move slowly. This is gonna be the key here because if you move too fast, it's just gonna look weird and you also gotta be very steady with your hands. Try to think of the different shots and how you can align them with each other when you're doing the cuts. This was the actual first time that I tried this technique and there is a couple of things that I think I could have done better, such as thinking out the different kind of shots and whenever you do a cut, try to start from the end of the last cut because when you're jumping into the editing process it's gonna be so much easier when you can match those up and do a speed ramp in between the two so that it feels like a seamless transition and when you're playing around with the different focal lengths you can also make it seem like you're zooming in in the same motion which is actually kind of a cool thing to play around with so if you're having a zoom lens i highly recommend you to use one of those i was using 1635 since I'm using Final Cut Pro. You probably know that if you're using Premiere, this is gonna be different, but I have absolutely no idea how to work in Premiere. But Bach Visuals, he has a tutorial on that, so I'm gonna link that in the description as well. So looking at the clip, it's moving very slowly and we have to do something about this because otherwise it's just gonna be like one minute, like whoa. The good thing with speed ramping in Final Cut Pro is that it's extremely simple. I've done a video about this, I think it was like two years ago, three years ago, but it's due date for an update, due date for an update, due time, due, for an update as well. And this is a perfect example to show you how to do good speed ramping in Final Cut Pro in 2022. So scrubbing through the first couple of five seconds, you can see that we're moving in closer to the bike. And I wanna start somewhere around here. So I'm gonna set the playhead and hit Shift B. Shift B is gonna be the key that you want to use when you're using speed ramps. Then we're gonna move forward to this point, maybe maybe six to eight seconds, something like that, and we're gonna hit Shift B again. And now you can see that we have one split here and one split here, but not in the actual clip. It's only in the actual speed of the clip. So what we want to do is that we wanna mark this little arrow right here, and then we're gonna hit Custom, and I'm gonna speed this up to like 6,000%, okay? 
And now you can see that these gray bars appear at the speed cut that we have done. And these gray bars are controlling how smooth the speed ramp is going to be. And playing this back, it moves in a little bit too fast. So I'm gonna go for maybe 4,000 instead of 8,000 and see how that looks. That feels a little bit better. And scrubbing through the clip, we wanna go towards the end of the clip, somewhere around here, and delete that part. And to be able to sell this effect, we only wanna make sure that the slow-mo is played back at very, very tiny fragments of the entire thing. So it's not gonna be longer than a second. So from this point on to this point, we are gonna set the playhead and then hit Shift B. And then we're gonna take this part, the speed of the clip, and then just drag it in to really fast. And then we can drag the gray area out so that we smooth out the speed of the clip and go back to smoothen this part out as well and smoothen this out. And we can drag this down and we can cut this down as well so that we don't have that long. When you want to make sure that you find the right pacing for the video, you just gotta play around with these speed ramps that you've set out. And now we wanna jump into a detailed shot of maybe from above. As you can see, we have like kind of a different movement because the first one is zooming into the bike and the other one is going back. So the first thing that we want to do now is we want to reverse this clip. And it already feels much more natural when you look, look it through. But what we can do now is that we can scrub forward through the clip and then hit Shift B again where the playhead is at. And we are going to choose Custom and 5000% and play that back it starts to feel a little bit like okay this works and again just leave a second max when the slow motion is before you do the speed ramp again and from this point on you just keep doing it like this with the different angles that you have but it's very important that you try to match the movement and the last frame of one clip with the starting frame of the second clip, because that is what's going to sell the entire concept. To make the transitions a little bit smoother, I have found that using a built-in effect in Final Cut Pro is one of the best things to do that. So we're gonna go down to the effects and type in zoom, and we are going to drag this onto the first clip, and scrolling through the clip, you can see that we have a big zoom. This this just looks weird. So we're gonna go into the video inspector and then choose zoom. We're gonna deselect that. I wanna make sure that this feels a little bit more alive. So what I want to do is that I wanna keyframe the scale of this clip and give it a little bit of a vertigo shot. So we're gonna set the playhead at the beginning of the clip and we're gonna go into the video inspector, hit the scale and then choose 130% and then move forward to just where you can see that the first speed ramp begins. And then we're gonna choose 110. If we play this back, you can see that it feels like it's sucking us in feeling to the shot. As the speed ramp begins, we can zoom out a little bit more and set another keyframe to 100. This is gonna be very subtle, but looks cool. And then for the last one, we wanna make sure that we zoom into the bike because I wanna make sure that we try to match the color of this shot with this shot. So how about to 180? Yeah, I think that that, that feels good, feels good. And again, it's very important that you play around with the different scale of the clip, the different positions of the clip, and trying to mix and match and see what you can come up with when you are doing the editing. What I wanna do now is smoothen out the speed ramps because you can see it's very jittery. It feels like it just goes in. So first thing I want to do, we wanna go into the zoom and we wanna change it from uniform to variable. And we're gonna drag it down to zero set a keyframe, go forward to the middle. So one, two, two, three, or four, and then forward again, and then drag down to zero. Ah, we have a little bit of, a little bit of motion blur, and then go to the end of the clip, and then drag it up to four, I think, five maybe. We are going to drag a new zoom, 
over to the second clip and choose variable, drag it down to five, adjust the key point because this is gonna be the focus point of the zoom. I'm gonna set it somewhere around here where the text is at and we are going to keyframe this and move forward one, two, three, four and drag it down to zero. We don't wanna have it too much because then it just looks like it's blurring out. So just using a couple of simple techniques, we end up with something that looks like this. And when you add in a little bit of sound effects, you do a little bit more tweaking to it. You play around even more with the positions, the scaling, the different keyframes that you can play around with. Then you end up with something looking like this. actually thinking that this technique is going to be possible to use on multiple different things. So I'm going to do a try here and see if we can capture my disk setup with this technique. I really hope that you learned something today and that you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe because that would be highly appreciated as well. I am saying thank you so much for watching this tutorial and I really hope to see you in the next video. Peter from Sweden is saying adios. <laughs>